Hey there, in this video we continue to look at the absolute value of a function. In this second part we are going to focus on the absolute value of a quadratic function. All right, we're going to continue looking at the absolute value of a function. In this case, we're going to look at the absolute value of a quadratic. So we have absolute value of x squared minus 2x minus 8. And our strategy, as before, is going to be if we want to know some information about absolute value of that function, we're going to just compare it to the function without the absolute value. In other words, we're going to use x squared minus 2x minus 8 to give us some information about absolute value of x squared minus 2x minus 8. We're going to think about the absolute value as a transformation on that function that I have highlighted in yellow there. Before we do that, we're going to find the x and y intercepts here. And as before, if you want to find the y intercept, you're going to substitute x equals 0. And if you want to find the x intercept, you're going to substitute y equals 0. So we'll start with y intercept here. We want I'll put some brackets there. We want x squared minus 2 times x minus 8. And we'll put our 0 in there for those. If we work that out, we get absolute value of 0 minus 0 minus 8. Or in other words, absolute value of negative 8. And this is going to turn into positive 8. What that actually means here, predicting a little bit ahead of time, is this by itself without the absolute value would have had a y-intercept of negative 8 but that y-intercept is going to become positive 8 in this absolute value function. Let's look at the x-intercept. The x-intercepts we're going to write our function out here and we're going to substitute in 0 for y so instead of that y we're going to put 0 there and then we're going to try and solve this now, as you've seen before, if we have absolute value of something equals zero, then the only way that that can work is if that something, in other words, this, without the absolute value brackets, has to equal zero. What that means is the x-intercepts of this absolute value function are going to be the same as the x-intercepts of the original quadratic function, which we'll see in a moment graphically. Sketch the graph of the thing. Easiest way to solve this one is to factor. This one does factor. We have x plus 2, x minus 4. Or in other words, our x-intercepts here are negative 2 and 4. All right, so we have a y-intercept of 8 and x-intercepts of negative 2 and 4. So we're going to try and sketch the graph of this thing here. We're going to use the strategy I described before. We're going to use x squared minus 2x minus 8 to help graph absolute value of x squared minus 2x minus 8. So we're going to first think about this. We already know the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are negative 2 and 4. Those do not change. This and this have the same x-intercepts. So we can graph those on there. We did see that the y-intercept of the new function is going to be positive 8 up here but without those absolute value brackets it would have been negative 8 so our the original quadratic that we have here would have had a y-intercept of negative 8 now you can use a little bit of logic here if you know that these are the two x-intercepts you know that the axis of symmetry and the vertex have to be halfway in between there. So halfway in between there is actually 1. So that's going to be the axis of symmetry. If you want to use that axis of symmetry to help with the graph, you can, if you know this point and you know it's symmetric, you can also use that idea to tell you that this is also going to be a point on that graph. And you know that since that's going to be the vertex, you could substitute that value 1 into here to tell you what that vertex is. So if I put a 1 in there, in other words, if I say 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 8, this is going to give me 1 minus 2 minus 8, which is actually negative 9, which is, we'll get that line out of there, which is right here. That's probably enough to get the shape of this thing right. If you, if you know the pattern in points there of that, you could actually probably also say that those two points are on there. But just for what we're doing here, that's not 
absolutely necessary. So we have a graph that looks something like this. That's the original function, more or less. Okay, I haven't worried about any other points there, but other than the ones I already plotted there, but that is that original quadratic function. Now, if you want to graph absolute value of that, the absolute value of that is gonna be where anywhere that it already has a positive y value, anywhere where this already has a positive y value is not gonna change. So this part above here is not gonna change. That part's gonna be the same. And this part's gonna be the same. But the parts that have negative y values, so this part down here, the parts that have negative y values are gonna get reflected up above. So this point down here, that vertex is not gonna be at negative nine, it's gonna be at positive nine. The intercept, as we saw before, is gonna become positive eight instead of negative eight. And so that point's gonna be like that. If you wanted to put those other ones, maybe you could put those as well, but that part is gonna get reflected up above. So this graph's gonna look like this strange W-shaped thing. All right, so what's in red there is this. All right, that part gets reflected up above. If you wanna look at the domain and the range, the domain doesn't actually change for this. Any X value is permitted there, there's no restrictions. The same here, you put any X value there, so this is all real numbers. The thing that changes is the range. Since we reflected all the negative parts up above, the range is just zero and above. So this is Y is greater than or equal to zero, right? There can't be any negative Y values. If we're gonna write this as a piecewise function, it's just expressing those two different parts of the graph, the part that stayed the same, that didn't change, and then the part that did get reflected, became the opposite. So if we're gonna write that, we're gonna write absolute value of x squared minus two x minus eight is equal to these two pieces here. It's equal to itself, it didn't change. If, this is gonna be a bit harder to write here, but it's if you're less than or equal to negative two, so if x is less than or equal to negative two, or it's greater than or equal to four, where x is greater than or equal to four. That's the part that didn't change. The part that did change, it became the opposite. So it became the opposite of this, put a negative in front. That it was when you were between negative two and four. So if x is, you can write a double inequality here, if x is less than four, but greater than negative two. Right, that double inequality. If both of those conditions are true, if it's greater than negative two and less than four. All right, so that's a piecewise function for that. The, this part is the blue part that didn't change. This part is the yellow part that did get reflected up above, all right? As before, that yellow part there, you could have written, you could distribute the negative and make it negative x squared plus two x plus eight. Switch all the signs if you want. All right, so that is a look at the absolute value of a function where the function you're talking about is a quadratic function.